Hi guys, it's Carla Nicole. So I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about all the confusion with this live today. Um, it is what it is. It happens, right? So we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, I have since changed um, everything so you guys can now um, see everything. We're going to be talking today about fantasy bonds. Um, last time Chelsea and I were together, we talked about um, trauma bonding. And I think it's important that we also talk about and discuss about tr uh, fantasy bonds. Because a lot of times nobody really wants to talk about um, fantasy bonds, of course. So um, what I'm going to now so anyway what I was saying is this is Carla Nicole if you don't know I'm a wisdom coach and this is teachable moments live with uh, Shelzy coach Shelzy and myself and we have this um, show once once a month where we discuss something that I think is important that we discuss for the betterment of community and the betterment of relationships parenting or whatever topic we're trying to address so I show that she's here, so let me invite her. So I did want to make sure that I'm giving you guys enough information on what's going on with the fantasy bonds. Hi, Shelby, we made it, didn't Hi. we? <laughs> Goodness, it let us know. It is what it is, right? It's always the trick of the trade where we have our little stuff but it's okay. We made, we made it through. How are you beautiful this morning? I'm good. How are you beautiful? I'm doing fine. I'm doing really good today. Um, again, you know, um, it is very cold where I am. We have like freezing, um, temperatures, like it's ridiculous, but I'm just in the house staying warm. What about you? How's it on your end of the world? <laughs> It's good. It snowed here too. It's not that. It's not as cold as it could be, but it snowed right, a little right. bit. We'll get to stay in this weekend too. Just waiting yes. for the sun to come. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, last time we had our live, we talked about trauma bonds, right? And yeah. we talked about the impact that trauma bonding can cause um, in relationships long term and how frustrating it can be when you're in a trauma bonded arrangement, agreement, situationship, whatever we're gonna call it. Um, and so um, I thought because we kind of talked a lot about that, that we touched on fantasy bonds as well. Yeah. Fantasy bonds aren't as common. I mean, a lot of people don't really talk about them, but they are real no less. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about, um, fantasy bonds. Now, have you ever had a fantasy bond yourself, personally? Have you ever dealt with that in your well, own personal you tell us, like, d d describe what a fantasy bond is and what, um, how that comes about for, for everyone? Well, first of all, fantasy bonds are, are created basically because um, it's preconceived notion of what you perceive the rela relationship to be before it actually evolves into what the real relationship is. So basically it's like having a pre determination of what something is, be it relational, um, that you have never been in, 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 in that type of interaction or space with that person, but in your heart, soul, and mind, you feel as though you have a connection with them based upon a fantasy yeah. um, version in your heart, mind, and soul. So what that means basically is we have had a, a person that maybe we have a crush on, like early in, in, yeah. in our early years as women, we have a tendency to have a crush on someone and we have a preconceived understanding of who they are before really getting to know that person and knowing them in real time or in reality. So we assume that we understand that person based upon what they look like or what actions that we saw them to do to portray what we can preconceive as them being this particular way and making it concrete in our own mind that that is who they are. And I say all the time that we as people change continuously. We have a continuum of changes all the time, but sometimes in our relationships, 
we have a preconceived notion of what we think based upon even even in the in personal great example is i could be best friends with someone and have a certain understanding of them in a best friends arrangement for, and then we can maybe decide we're going to evolve into a love relationship and it's not the same the yeah. person is different they're the, this way when they're friends with you, but they're this way when they're in a love relationship with you. Um, because of course that comes with more vulnerability, more openness, more, you know, a lot more layers are, are revealed. And so we have a tendency to believe that, well, I had a great friendship with someone and then we transformed into a relationship. So now I'm confused as to why this person isn't who I thought they were when we were in that style of dynamic. Yeah. So again, fantasy bonding can be created from even a preconceived understanding of someone in a certain role in your life. So, um, and even even parentally, like even as a parent, we can be a certain way we are with our children when they're young and small and, and cute and everything. And then we can transform into a different style parent as they become an adult or a, a parent of them of their own. And then we're feeling like, well, we're a different type of parent now because you used to be this to me, but now you're this to me. So I'm confused. But why I wanted to talk about fantasy is because a lot of times in our mind, we have a very preconceived understanding of what someone is in our life before really getting to know them and accepting who they are in their authentic self today in real time versus who we knew them to be or versus who we think they will become right so that is what i mean by fantasy bonds. i hope i explained that clear where people can understand it so there's like the very original way of seeing it like that boy that picked up your books that you dropped in junior high school and then you see you're like now he loves me and he's going to you know yes. always caring and considerate and just not even sees anything else or how about is another example like the bad boy situation like if that boy that picked up the books is the bad boy but you're like oh for me he's going to turn into this you know into, of yeah. course is that course, like the, yeah. the common like for women and like the bad boy where they're like oh absolutely he's bad boy, but for me he's going to become you know family man be totally present and be absolutely this and all of these things are going to happen because he demonstrated this one thing that gives me the idea that, or maybe a few right. things even, but it's not really all the whole completeness of who that person is. Yes. And so fantasy bonds also can happen because you um, have an agenda or you have some type of, I guess, when I say agenda, I guess I, I should say you have a goal set for what you want the relationship to blossom into or you have a so-called um goal or you have some type of um mindset that you feel that this person will be to you yeah. now it could be platonic but right now we're pretty much talking about love interest right. so with that said a lot of times because in our culture um, and you're from two different cultures, so you can even address this, but in this particular American culture, the goal for love relationships is to become married. Yeah. That is supposedly the goal or the highest level of committed relationship you can possibly become involved in or evolve to. And so a lot of times when we are dating, maybe in the dating phase of the relationship with someone we begin to get excited and feel as though i'm in my mind seeing us becoming this and in my mind i'm seeing it becoming that but in reality it's a totally different right. understanding or example because in life we have several examples do we not yeah always like we have the same opportunity to learn like we get the same opportunities to learn the same things in many multiple different situations right so if we have these different examples or opportunities like you said in those dynamics of relationship um sometimes we become so committed to the fantasy in here and in our heart 
that we're not really paying close attention to what it is or what it will develop into. And even though in fantasy, a lot of times we'll say in fantasy, things are so perfect, right? But sometimes in the fantasy, your reality would be better if you would allow yeah. it to become that without trying to infiltrate your opinion well, or infiltrate your positioning. Of course, reality is going to be better than illusion. If you imagine you're in a situation <laughs> that doesn't exist, being in the present is totally <laughs> right. Exactly. But a lot of people don't see that because if you can think back when you were young, I know when I was young, we were taught to really dive into our imagination and learn about your creative side and what do you want and what do you see becoming and all of this stuff. But I think that where the fantasy bonding came into play is because we take what we see in our mind or what we want to dream up of being normal or being what should be the standard for what we want in a committed relationship, love relationship, or any type of dynamic. I think a lot of times we have that state of thinking that that particular style in our life is going to become this. So because it's going to be that, we are bonded to this person based upon the fantasy and not based upon reality. Because in your coaching practice, I know in mine, I have a lot of women or even men that are conflicted with the um, uncertainties in relationship. So what I mean by that, and this is why I wanted to talk about or touch base upon the, the fantasy bonding, is because many of them will tell me, well, I'm getting mixed signals. That'll be one of the things they say to me. They'll say to me, um, they're peekabooing me, like peekaboo, and then they're gone, or they're in, or they're out, or they're liking me here, but then I get this dead silence. I don't know. I'm not in touch with them on a continuum. I'm, con I, you know, I'm just, it's like a in and out motion. Uh -huh. And I continue to tell them, well, let's look at this. Is it that, because they'll tell me that they're in love with the person. So this is something that's deep because this is why yeah. I, we need to tap on this because they'll tell me I'm in love with this person. And I'm like, are you in love with the person or are you in love with the fantasy of the person right. you think they're going to become? And once I prick, once I prick their mind as to, am I looking at this correctly or am I looking at this in a fantasy format, if you will, um, they begin to then start to get more into reality and start to be like, okay, now that I see it for what it is and not for what I want it to be, now I'm able to process and be more realistic in my expectations of what I'm going to get from this particular dynamic. Have you found that you have dealt in your, in your coaching um, practice where some people are in between a rock and a hard place trying to figure out if this person's for me, do they love me or not? I mean, do you get that same? Well, I mean, a lot of, a lot of my clients, they come in, in a space of like almost divorce and like, mm -hmm. because, okay. Because it's like, maybe it just came to that point of like, Oh, he, and I work, I worked just with women. I don't, I wouldn't mind working with men, but I've just worked with women. Right. And so, it's like, and that's what I know the best, right? That's what I understand. Right, right, culture. gotcha, yeah. And so <laughs> they, they <laughs> yeah. come from a space of like just falling into that reality of like, oh, this person in this relationship isn't going to develop into what I, after maybe 15 years or whatever, he's not going to be what I want him to be. Or it's not what I thought that it was, or he's changed from what, and sometimes maybe even he didn't change, but it's like they started to let go of that illusion and then they start to see things the way they really are. And right. so there is, there's two ways that I see this. Like there is a benefit to being able to visualize and see things the way that you want it to be. Like energetically and for your own peace of mind and for right. your own peace of feeling to be able to like want things to be a certain way and see it and to be able to like find evidence that proves that things are going your way is really beneficial to like our life. The other side is that yes. real authentic connection comes from really authentically in reality connecting and relating. And if we're not being able to work through those things that are 
actually happening that are not in alignment with our fantasy. It, fantasy, right. I'm going to say different than vision, because if you have a vision, you know it's not here yet, but you're feeling into it, you're waiting right. for it, and you're also open. Like when we're when we're yeah. manifesting or bringing in, it's like with open, it's like this or something better. So I right. want this to happen. And that's and there's very and that's very good that you you did a distinguished difference because there is it can it could be that um, confusion there where there's a, a a not a clear understanding from the line between the vision versus the line of the fantasy. Right, Very or the fantasy is, is avoidant, right? It's like right. the fantasy, I'm avoiding what I don't want to see. It's not like I am I know those things exist and I know they can still get better and I know. And a real, like, so there's connection, something that I teach in the very beginning to most of my clients and that I'll be putting into my online course is that we can fall in love with people as who they are. Like, like it's a divine kind of love, right? There's our right. soul who we yes. really are, that nobody is made better or more perfect than anybody else. And like, right. that's a wholesome love that we can have for anybody. That doesn't mean that we have to be with that person, but we can love them from this space and be compassionate and accept. Accepting okay. doesn't mean that we tolerate things that are bad for us, but accepting who they really are. That's right. like a real deep love. Then yes. there is the love of falling in love with someone's character. And people's character, just like in a movie, is changing all the time. Changing, like you yes. said, people are always changing. We're always changing. Absolutely. So what I believe, what I think, how I act, how I react, what my values are, is always changing. And like, right. it's not like overnight, like, oh, I'm a totally different person. But on little levels, everything that we bring in are consistently developing us into who we're becoming. So right. falling in That's love true. with someone based on their character is uh, is like tricky ground because it's unstable right their character right. is always changing and yes. then if we believe like oh their character is changing so they're going to turn into this character for right. me or because i want them to be this for me that's like even trickier ground because it's not even what really is that's like right yeah and that's what i love about that truth is that we need to be aware at all times um and i feel like also i want to tap on with fantasy bonding is that a lot of times we want to bond with someone based upon what we accept them to be yeah. but when someone is telling you or showing you a different side of themselves that you don't want to acknowledge is their truth and they're telling you it is their truth um i think this is where things get very very sticky because we are constantly, if you're in a love affair or in a love relationship or in a dynamic where there is an intimacy, you seem to get complacent. Oftentimes we, we tend to get complacent and comfortable with no longer asking thought provoking questions. We lose sight of poking into their well being, poking into their mental health, poking into what is going on with, with, with inside self that maybe you don't want to be, or you don't feel safe with talking about. Yeah. This is where intimacy comes in. As an intimate partnership, we should be focusing on making sure that we are without a doubt, making sure that our love, in our love affairs, our love interest feels safe with being their authentic self. Even right. in the uncomfortable conversations, even in the uncomfortable uh, scenarios, we need to be okay with discussing some hard topics, discussing some things that even maybe in the past we went through, or even in some things we're afraid of or fearful of. But because a lot of times, if you pay attention, and I know I pay attention to this a lot, is in my coaching practice, I noticed that love in love affairs, there's a confidant that knows more about your lover than you than your than than I should say they should and what i mean by that is your lover is 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 more you know, what you think of your lover i should say what you think with your about your lover to your confidant is conveyed in all honesty and all clarity because normally when you have a confidant there they're able to allow you to say what you want to say feel what you want how you want to feel but when it comes down to having that confidence in that love affair a lot of people hide stuff from their lovers 
I see that so often and I'm like, why are you being deceptive in the love affair you're in? Right. If anything else, you should be very candid, very open, the very most honest. Vulnerable. Yes, and more vulnerable so that in the uncomfortable conversations, you can build a understanding of each other. But a lot of times we try to hold back. I'm just going to tell my girlfriend about why this bothers me with him. Or I'm going to tell my best friend or my boy over here that I go and eat, you know, every weekend. And I tell him all the issues I have with my girl, but she doesn't know. She's thinking everything's wonderful at home. But when you, when he sits down and talks to his buddy, he's telling him everything that he sees wrong in the relationship, but they go home, they smile, they act like nothing's wrong. And then the deception comes. And I feel like the deception is coming because of the fantasy bonding that you have. You do not want to reveal the truth to your partner, nor do you want to reveal the things that you're uncomfortable with in your, in your relationship or marriage, whatever, to your, you know, to your lover either. And so you're holding them back. an opportunity to really connect. Yes. And so yeah. fantasy bonds oftentimes hold this, fake, I would say, it's almost fake, um, glue within that dynamic, but there really isn't a true authentic care of understanding who they truly are because of our own, and it may be on our end, it may be our own fears. I fear that if they show me their real self that I can't handle it, but you would rather do that now so you can understand, can I handle that? So what do you think? On your end, Shells, when you have these types of dynamics, what do you feel that would be easier for um, a person in this dynamic to really start to break free from living in fantasy and being more authentic without sharing so much with someone else? Right. Well, I, I hear everything that you're, you've been describing is like actually a fear of intimacy because a fear of being seen because if I keep this person at this distance and this created reality instead of like the present reality then i yes. can't really be hurt i can't really be um, <laughs> we talked about that with the trauma bond yes yeah. yeah i can't really be what's the word rejected not neglected rejected, rejected because yeah. i'm not coming with my whole self and so the same way as you're like not rejecting that part of the other person you're wanting to not be so, so and that's something that i say too it's like our romantic relationships is our greatest mirror because it's the person that we can see the most of ourselves in. So everything that we see in the other person, and it's hard to see in the beginning, especially if we're lacking that self-compassion, right? Um, because there's like so much resistance to be like, oh yeah, everything that I don't like is actually something that is missing within me, something that I need to accept within me, something that I need to like within me. So it makes it even easier, like this dynamic of relationship makes it even easier. It's like, well, if I don't have to see anything that I don't like about you, like I really don't have to see anything that I don't like about me, because usually the dynamic is, I'm gonna see everything that's wrong with you and I'm not gonna see what's wrong with me. But if I don't have to look at any of yours, like that's the next level of I don't have to look at any of mine. So we're going back to bonding and we're going right back to self. Yeah. That's the thing. We always go back to self. So again, I love what you brought out was the fact that the self cannot uh, operatively in relationships. The hardest part of relationships is that if you're not really truly healed inside yeah. and you bond with someone in a fantasy bond, the reason why we have a tendency to have a hard time breaking free from that bond because we don't want to really truly face self doubts, yeah, self um, reservations, yeah, criticisms, um, a lot of things in self that we don't want to sit back and say, "Ooh, I need to do some work." Because in, in a sense, sometimes we can get lazy with wanting to do certain things. Like, you know, oh, I don't feel like doing that right now. You know, I'm good. I don't want to have to focus on me. I don't want to have to do that. I'm in a relationship now. I'm good. And right. so that's like, <laughs> you know, we talk about that all the time. Once we get in a relationship, we are good. We are set. It's like, no, you have to still grow. Right. 
you have to still do your it's spiritual like, work. It's like, it's not an ends to a mean. It's not like I'm only going to work on myself until I get this person that will take right. me on no matter what. Yeah. You have to continue with your growth. And so I think that when we're looking into relationships, we're looking sometimes at the relationship being our safety net for not having to do the inner work. And I was talking about this earlier today, like when sometimes, um, and I don't know if you've ever been approached by a man that may be in pursuit of a relationship because he's already set. He's got his finances in place. He's got everything good. He's ready to settle down. He's got his house. He's got everything ready for the woman to, to now be in his life. And I was talking about, well, that's all well and fine, but when you demand now that I want a relationship now, so I, you know, do you want a relationship? And then if a woman's like, well, I just want to get to know you, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I want a relationship yet. Right. And they move on to the next, like, okay, well, I don't have time for this. You know, they're in a rush to say, per se. Um, they also are going to develop the fantasy bond. Because as long as you get a lady or a woman that you're attracted to, that is okay within your checklist of things that you want in a woman, and you try to pursue that woman, and she says, oh, I'm up for relationships, yes, she gives the right answer, he's grabbing you, and you're in there. But wait, is this person, is there enough time invested to develop a solid, long-term, fulfilled relationship? Again, and I brought that up because a lot of times we think fantasy bonds is only going to be on the woman's side. No, fantasy bonds can even be on the masculine side, on the men's side, where a man is in pursuit of trying to now, because some men have been told that you don't bring in a woman in your life until you have all your financial stability, all your career stable, all your home in place, you have your land, you have your 401k, you have your retirement plan. You have, right. Somebody I can go on. I, I can go on and on. <laughs> and you see with men that are at that, at that, um, I should say life cycle where they are, they are in a good financial state or good, um, you know, just prepared for a relationship. But they, what they're missing is as long as you put the pressure on to try to develop a relationship because of that, you're now going to easily develop into a fantasy bond that maybe is not really healthy because now she's just coming to you in that bond because of what you've already accomplished, not because you've actually developed into a solid love affair that has now become um, one to be um, thankful for and, and fulfilled in. And this is why I say that it can be on either side. It could be the woman or it can be the man. Wanting these bonds so bad that you're tripping over yourself to the point where you're just discarding people because you feel like, well, they don't want a relationship, so I'm out of here. It's like, well, you don't know that. Most people don't know if they want a relationship or not until they begin to evolve and develop. Just like I said before, relationships, when you're talking about developing into a relationship, you, you tend to find out like, oh, wait, in these relationships, it has to take time to develop in order for us to be more in a, a solid affair. Yeah. Yeah. And coming to it, like you said, like if there's so much expectation on it and that's like, that that's what's that saying? Like expectation is the killer of happiness or something like that. But if you you come with it with so much expectation on it, like, oh, okay, right. this person, this person needs X, Y, Z, A, B, C, all of right. the things. And so that means that we should be compatible. And that's like only on the mental level. There's like so yes. many different levels of connection, like of emotional right. connection, of energetic connection. There's all of these different things that go into play. And then right. also there's like this, that you're already creating maybe that preconceived like um with the expectations if it's this person that thinks they have to show up with everything already and all set in their life it's like oh that means maybe so like valentine's day i'll give an example that's coming Perfect. up now it's Perfect like example. people have yes. an expectation well valentine's right. day if we've been dating for three months that means this person should be taking me out to dinner get me flowers get me chocolate or whatever for, for maybe the man's side he thinks i have to do this for the woman because it's valentine's day 
or maybe there's people that think something different they think oh because it's valentine's day that's it. they even have a resistance to showing yes. up in that day because it's like a national so holiday. Much pressure yes right yes. so they're like yes. i don't even want to show up on that day i would rather do it another day to prove my love has nothing to do with this so there's yes. these like ideas and expectations but if we come into it like thinking that the other person fits all of my ideas and expectations and right. then there's that lack of real connection and communication then that's where things start to fall apart because it's like oh if the woman comes in and she's like this guy he has everything all set up for me that means valentine's day he's going to get me all the things take me out and then if he doesn't she's disappointed and there's no communication about it or the same right. thing with the guy he's like oh i i think it's better for me to not show up in this way because that's a preconceived notion of a holiday and i don't want to be told what to do and then yep. the girl is expecting something and he and then he doesn't do it and then she doesn't say anything because she he thought that she understood like no my love is independent of what so they're independent these, i love that yeah, yeah. they're independent these, of the actions of these holidays or day. sweetest day or whatever day yeah, that they it's not wrong either way it's like right. what's the intention behind it and like is right. are both people on the same page and that's like yes. what fantasy bond is is you being on two different pages Yes. It's like the other person is just like me. They want the same thing as me. They think the same way right. as I do. We're going right. to develop and grow into something together. Right. This expectation that we're going to be doing the same thing. And then when things don't work out, there's like, um, and I actually bring this up for a very specific reason. Like I was on a clubhouse the other day and, and there was okay. a group of men and women talking about this, about Valentine's Day, their different ideas and perceptions about it. it. Uh -huh. And I didn't have time to chime in and say, you know what, like everyone's allowed to want what they want for their relationship. Like I yes. can want that every Valentine's Day, my husband takes me on a trip out of the country. Like I yes. can want that, but I yes. would have to want it with the guy that wants to do that for me. Thanks. Yeah. And with the man, like, no, I can want to show my love every single day for this girl. I want, I can want, like the man can want to just show up you know, one day and give her a nice jewelry just for no reason, just because he saw it and thought of her and that thought that was helpful. And then maybe Valentine's Day, he's busy and he's working and he's not going to have time for it. But he also has to have the woman that understands that and is yes. okay with that. And and, and we and, talked about this. Yes, we enough. talked about this, I think, in trauma bonding, the exact same yeah. thing. This yeah. comes down to I love what you're saying, because it's so true that a lot of times we have expectations of someone that may not have the same expectations that we have. Yeah. And so now we're in this bond with someone and we're, we, we're finding ourselves and see there's peaks and valleys in relationships. And we talk about that too. Peaks and valleys in relationships. So there's times when you're on a high, everything's going well, everything is going wonderfully. And then there's the valleys where there's a lot of lows. There's a lot of disappointments. There's a lot of misunderstandings. There's a lot of pain going on. Yeah. And I believe that what you said, which which was powerful, is the misunderstandings are coming from the high expectations. They're not realistic. Again, we're going from fantasy to reality. So I want to make sure we're clear about why fantasy tends to really strip look really good, possible, wholesome relationships because I have seen other people. And remember, we talked about this before, but when you're in when you're in a fantasy world or when you're watching other people a lot of times we need to turn the TVs off turn off the reality shows watch what you're even digesting when you're reading well even These Instagram people, and social media we Instagram, like Instagram social, social media and even your even your book diet needs yeah. to be very clear that you're not driving inside your soul or spirit high expectations of what they do for their relationship I want that. I, you know, I want, I see where this man bought his wife a big old, you know, Bentley or he, right. bought, he bought her a home or he bought this and that and, and start to set your own bar based upon things rather than treatment. Uh -huh. Because treatment and things are two totally different things. Right. You can get a, you, I, I don't know how many abused heartbroken women that have been in toxic trauma bonds with men that will give them the world right. with things and then turn around and beat them up or break their spirit or yeah. kill their vibe 
but they give them outlandish gifts. And then you're like, oh, I think my value system's off. Yes, it's really off. You have to be mindful because a lot of times we don't think about the power of what we value. So when we're watching those programs, the reality shows, like the Instagram, we begin to program. If it, unless you're, unless you have a higher spiritual awakening, you can watch those things and it won't leave an imprint, right, on your spirit, on your soul, on your heart, on your mind. So some of the stuff you could just watch, and it's just like watching a play. Oh, that's hilarious! Ha ha ha! He he he! And then you don't let it impact your reality. You're here now, but a lot of people don't have them. So a lot of times. So a lot of times they are imprinted in your soul now that in my relationship, I have to have this, I have to have that. But where you're falling short is you're not paying attention to how you're being treated and treatment, regardless if you're in a fantasy bond or a loving bond or whatever bond you're in, needs to hold the most, I believe, the most weight because and it's not based upon what they're giving you either you know financially or materially but what are they giving you to make sure that your well-being is well kept uh -huh. and i think a lot of times we miss that part i think you touched on something so profound like on a broader level that it's like not even just on wanting things but any any kind of expectation like what's the real and that and I think that's the the key to getting over not just the trauma bonds but the fantasy bonds is yes. like what is it inside of me yes. that is attracting me to this kind of relationship? What is it inside yes. of me that says that I need this A B C this X Y Z? Right. What is it in me? Like, is that really aligned with my values, or is that old conditioning? Is yes. that old patterning? Is that stuff that I've been programmed to believe that isn't really yes. part of my belief system? Right. And then you have to work those things on a deeper level. Right. And then once those things are worked on a deeper level, then like first within yourself, then you can bring it to the other person, right? Then yes. even if it's, and so this is what's really cool. I think, I think you said one thing that's really key too about you have to see how you're being treated in the relationship. And, and I'll say, a little more even specific than that like the way that you're treated is to really be seen in a way that is safe and yes. nurturing and supportive yes. and that yes. even if i can go to my husband and say you know what babe i know i still need to work on this like on my own deeper level but like right. i really would like a dozen roses for valentine's day like and for him to be able to say like oh that doesn't have anything to do with me that doesn't have anything to do with our relationship this is something right. her. and that doesn't even mean he has to do it it yes. means like he's gonna be there and see that and be compassionate for it yeah be like okay what so what is the real need like what is the need right. behind wanting a dozen is it that you just want to smell roses is that what it is right is <laughs> do it, you it, want me to do you want to go to the roses today does that yeah mean? or do right. you need do you need them on Valentine's Day so you can post them on social media? What does that mean? Does that mean right. that you are needing acceptance, attention from others? Like, how do right. you get that within yourself? Yes. It's not even the other person giving it to you, but just having, right. that, again, that mirror. Like, as yes. soon as I'm able to show myself compassion and be accepting of everything that I think I shouldn't be thinking or shouldn't be acting or shouldn't be a right. certain way, then that person can show up in that way for me as well and then and that's a real connection it's like being able to say this is what i want yeah and the other person to say okay whatever you want really has nothing to do with me but I, we can be in it together we can be in it together and and i think also which i love what you talked about there because i don't think many people realize that um in our wants or in our certain kind of um desires a lot of times it's come from something and you you peaked on that perfectly it's coming from something right. you desired that for a reason not just on the surface like oh i really like that shoe so i'm going to try it on and wear it and, and be happy and fulfilled because i have the shoe but what about the shoe what is it about that particular brand name or what is it about that why do you need to go and have dinner with your husband why when you can just lay up 
together on the couch and do a Netflix night or something? Why do you have to go out to an outlandish restaurant or <laughs> dress up or, or have a whole limo show up? Why, what's the difference between the two? And only you can say, well, I actually like that because I feel more whatever those feelings are to, to basically distinguish what the need is. Because the need is not necessarily, like you said, right or wrong. Right. It's just something in me, I think, I feel well, yeah. a certain way because and of this, this particular is act. It's okay. Like when I meet that need within myself first, right. then it's okay to still want it outside. It doesn't right. mean that like to know that, okay, I can feel totally seen, totally accepted, totally loved without the limo, without the roses, without the restaurant, right. Right. I, can, I can know that that person is supportive and seeing me and loving me without it, and right. they can still give it to me, even so. Yes. Even after yes. that. Not for a need, because lots of times, if there's a need, and yes. we think we're going to be fulfilled by the shoe, or the limo, or the vacation, yes. or the job, or the money, or the yes. boyfriend, or the what girlfriend, happens? or the marriage. What happens? Actually, usually it's not. Usually it's not what it is. Still <laughs> empty, and you're like, God, yes. I thought this thing was gonna fill yes. up what was empty. Yes. Me. yes. Like, and exactly. so you have to fill it first. Yes. And that's again, we like go back around, like that's the, the self work. That's the that inner is work. The that's my own. Yes. Path. I love that's that. Like, that. Yes. Up, like in you a relationship with somebody else. Yes, you killed that because that's where the power is. And see, when you're in a loving relationship, we cannot be honest with, we have to be honest with self first, see? Yeah. And what I love is how you presented it as if, it, as if that's a true scenario. But I'm saying, as you said, I to, if I told my husband I would love the roses and then leave it to be what it is. Right. It's without expectation. I'm just telling you what I love, what I like, what I enjoy. Yeah. And it takes, it actually takes, to me, it takes more self-love to own what you desire, right. to own what you like, to own what you need. To well, own what you be want. Like you, what you just mentioned, to be detached, like either yes. way, if he gives you the roses or not, has nothing yes. to do with love for you. It has nothing to has do nothing for, yes. To, yeah, has nothing to do with how he feels about the day. It has nothing to do, like it's detached from right. that. Maybe yeah. it has to do with the amount of time he had. Maybe it has to do with the amount of money he had. Maybe it had to do how busy his day was. Maybe right. it has to do with his own resistance to showing up on like a holiday. On that particular day, yes. Yeah. It has Absolutely. nothing to do with you. So being able to be honest and open, and then that's like, you're actually less vulnerable when you're sharing authentically. And you're giving the opportunity to connect in a real way because it's like, instead of being like, oh, I have this expectation and if this person doesn't do it, then we're not compatible. It's like, okay, I'm giving you, I'm telling you what we want and we can see right away instead of waiting for them mm -hmm. to like, quote unquote, mess up a, yeah. a, a number of times. It's like people think like, oh, I'm gonna wait till he, to see if he gets better, if she gets better, if they change. I'm gonna yes. wait three months, six months, a year, fifteen <laughs> years. <if they're laughs> we put not, a timeline on yeah, it. Yeah, not fitting into what I want. And it, it's something else that you said from the beginning. People will show you who they are from yes. the beginning. From the and beginning. If that's important to you. Like you get to choose that. If that's yes. the level of relationship that you're at at that point. If it's not that deep, like I need to be seen and supported, and this. It's like if it's I need the roses. You get yeah. to ask for that, and right away you get to see right away if that's going to be the relationship that you want or not. Yes, and I think what you said is is dead on. Um, I feel like a lot of times when we are in these dynamics, we have a tendency to um, try to you know set a bar, and when we set bars up in relationships based upon our past experiences, based upon um, what we see, like I said, social media or what we're reading about or our love novels or whatever we're doing <laughs> that's impacting and leaving the highest imprint on what we desire and want without really stepping outside of it and saying, well, wait a minute, what can I give myself? And see, one of the things that I have learned and, I, and I've been really doing well, I would say in the last couple of months, just really deciding that 
my decision to do something that is going to not just benefit me per se, but my son and my nephew and, and a friend of mine, um, I've decided to just do um, one tank trips and doing them once a month, mm -hmm. taking a whole week off work and just going and doing something that impacts not just me, but also gives life to um, my son and his friends because the boys love cars. So, you know, and I'm fine with it because I enjoy that they enjoy it. So we go to different, you know, different cities, different places that we never have been. And I've made a decision, a conscious decision, to now focus on just getting outside of my normal environment to just appreciate learning something new, being somewhere new, learning different people, getting involved with different things. Because to me, I feel like we have a tendency to desire someone else's life to the point where we don't realize how much power we have in our own life to do something we really want to do, yeah. be it as it may. And, and here's the thing, we will sacrifice our time, our energy. We will do a lot of things, tired as hell. Let our kids say they need something. Mom, I need this by tomorrow. I have to have this thing for our school project. Why did you wait till, till eight o'clock at night to tell me? You're exhausted, you're tired, you worked all day, but you will sacrifice that sleep to go get the, those school supplies instead of making that child get an F in the project because you are going to sacrifice self. But we very seldom sacrifice ourselves from just the routine to go into a different environment to go into a different area, to go and learn something new, to go and do something that we never would do if we never really just don't sit down and say, I will sacrifice this because I want to do something I want to do. Not because of my mate or my man or my daughter or my son, but because I want to do it. That is something that I've decided to do not just because it will help you not to develop fantasy bonds, but it also helps you to understand that you have more power over your own happiness more than you know. We don't realize that our own happiness has very little to do with someone else. Yeah. The other person and the other people in our lives, our lovers, our kids, our family, are the byproduct of our life, but we have the total control over what we need, what we want, what we desire. But a lot of times we're living in life thinking, oh, I'm obligated to everybody else. But we just, and sacrifice self things we want to do. Like, yeah. I don't know how many mothers are sitting there upset because they can't do what they want or go where they want. It's like, you can put it to the side and say, I demand myself to do this for me. Well, and that, I, the, when you very first started mentioning this, like you said, something very potent is like, that I have to give to myself. And actually anything that we accept from even anybody else or from the world or from the universe, we first have to give to ourselves. And I'll do like, so even like a real physical gift, like if someone is gonna give you flowers, like you have to accept it. You like, nobody can give you something that you can accept, positive and negative, right? Right, like, right. You know, like, that you won't right. accept. That's Nobody nice. can give you an apology that you won't accept. And so like doing it first for yourself and knowing how to give yourself gifts and how to give yourself time and how to yes. give yourself an apology, like how to yes. give yourself forgiveness, not an apology, but give yourself forgiveness, forgiveness. Yep. giving yourself all compassion. Like mm -hmm. these are the things before you can give it to somebody else, before you can accept it. Right. Somebody else, yes. only you could give it to yourself. So anything anybody right. else tries to do for you, if somebody wanted to offer you, Carla, like I'm going to take you, Carla, somewhere and we're going to go drive somewhere. Or we're going to go on vacation. Like you would have to first allow yourself to have that, even for someone to be able to give it to, to you. Give so seeing that is really empowering. Yes. Like, oh, I can actually do this for myself first. For myself, the more yes. that I know how we're reconnecting neural nets, like you were saying, it's something different than the status quo. It's something different than the day to day, than yes. the routine, than what we're used to, than the regular patterning. 
yes. we're breaking up the yes. things that are keeping us the same that will allow our lives to be different. So I'm going to start doing it first within myself yes. in like the, even the littlest, subtlest ways. And right. that allows more and more of it to come into your life. Yeah. And I, and you don't realize it until you start to do when yeah. you start doing and making those decisions to do something, even if it's once a week, even if it's once a day, once, you know, we need to be more proactive with caring about what we really want. Life is so precious. You know what I mean? It's so precious. And I think, you know, when you get into this whole humdrum and, you know, you're just feeling like, well, I get up, I do the same thing every day. You get in a rut. You do. Yeah. You get into a psychological rut and you feel like, you know, what is this really? What am I really? I mean, what is this really? And it's like, well, it's what you make it. <laughs> what we put our energy in to being excited for is something that we have to do. And I, I use this example with another person that I was coaching. I said, think back to when you were a child. Every day you had recess at, in, 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 from Monday through Friday. You had recess in school. And what did you look forward to every day at school? Recess. Why? Because it's something to look forward to. It's something to bring you joy. It's something that you can socialize. You can get to see people. You haven't talked to them. You get to have fun, right? But we don't do that in our, in our humdrum when we get in this humdrum, depressed state, I'm not right. saying depression, I'm saying depressed state of being, we have a tendency to not be, we don't look forward to something. And I think that it's a very bad sacrifice we're making when we can be making something to look forward to in our life every day. But again, fantasy is why it's, it's in the forefront, in the frontal lobe of your mind because you're focused more on fantasy because reality is so routine. Reality isn't pricking any excitement. Reality isn't pricking any unpredictability. You know, when you're traveling, you don't know what you might see, what you might come across, what restaurant you'll come across or what people you'll get to learn about or, or, or meet or, but when you go on this routine and you have this, you know, continuum of, stagnation or a continuum of just obligatory routines you begin to feel bogged down with just boredom like an uninspired life and what you said about fantasy um now i forgot what i was gonna say <laughs> you were saying what, what did you just say oh oh i depriving us like if we are in so if you're like if it's like oh my life is boring and i'm gonna be in this illusion of something to make it seem better than it is not because i'm working towards it or right. visualizing towards it but just so that it just so that it doesn't feel as bad as it feels to like see things as they are we right. deprive ourselves from the opportunity like awareness is the first step for us to be able to move towards something. There, then there's acceptance and then there's the actions, but without the awareness of what really is right now, there's just no way. And so I think that's that's something that key, is like key that keeps us in that fantasy is like not having, not wanting to have the awareness because we don't know how to have that acceptance, how to be like, oh, it's okay that things are the way they are right now. It's okay right. that it's humdrum right now. It's okay that it's not what I want it to be. Right. right now and i can move towards that and i can right. change it and i can yes. but if you don't see it what can, what are you going to change what are you going to move towards what are you what are your actions going to be how are you going to take new things on if in your mind you're trying to make it okay as it is right and and we and i think you feel um less power empowered because yeah. you're you're getting to the rut of feeling like this is just what it is. And it's like, no, it starts with you inside your soul. We have the power to make change and difference and power um, just by making small, subtle steps. You don't have to go and make a whole big old vacation. Right. But like I told you, it's one tank trips that is nothing. You know what I'm saying? And just do it 
and it doesn't cost but a couple pennies to do it. So it doesn't have to be outlandish or huge or anything like that. It could just be something small. Small steps ha helps us to get to the larger leaps in life. And a lot of times we just take small steps and then we give up. It's like, no, take small steps. Take yourself to a different place. You know, I was encouraging a friend of mine, like, go out to eat all by yourself. Right. When you don't have your kids. Take yourself on a date. Go, yes. Or even go, go shopping, grocery shopping by yourself. You will save so much money, you know. And uh, we laughed about it. But she was like, hey, I went to Waffle House by myself. And I liked it. I said, you will find you like yourself more than you give yourself credit for. A lot of times we don't want to be alone. Right. We have an issue with like our avoidant time. behavior instead of creative behavior. Yes. And don't you feel like more relationships would be more wholesome if we had time, more time apart to be in our own aloneness, to be in our own state of mind, to be in our own place of thought without having to take on someone else's opinion or focus or thoughts just so we can be more in tune with who we are right. so that when we do become vulnerable, vulnerable and intimate, we can be more authentic about who we are. Right. Well, knowing our, and you just circled around again. It's like, it starts yeah. with, it starts with us and oh, knowing okay. ourselves and being ourselves and, and getting really intimate with ourselves for us to even like be able to do that with another person. Absolutely. But like I said, you know, fantasy bonds are challenging, um, but you can break free from them once you start to really step out of the fantasy and become more realistic in what you see and understand. And once you start to really say, well, maybe I need to shut off some of the portals to the fantasy. So the portals are what you're reading, what you're watching, mm -hmm. what you're hearing, what you're talking about, who, it, it, even people in your life can be helping your fantasy to just keep going, <laughs> you know, because certain friends, can be in your life to where they can continue to help you to inspire the fantasy. Right. So you need to sometimes disassociate. You need to start to break ties and break free from the fantasy. And why is the fan fantasy so pristine? Well, a lot of times it's because you have a connection to the fantasy that's got you locked and attached to it. Yeah. And in the attachment, mental attachment or heart attachment, we have a tendency to not realize that once we break free from the attachment, the vision, why we talk about it so much, what's what's really energetically keeping that fantasy alive? Because there is some kind, there is something keeping it alive, right? Yeah, yeah, that finding that deeper root, like what you said. What is it actually? So what? It's kind of what like is the it question, really? It's like what am I? Yeah, what is it? What do I think it's giving me? What do I believe it's giving me to be in this state? And what would really, right. what would actually really fill that space or that, for that, that space and that need? That and need, I, think, yeah. I think when you, um, and I think we, we talked about this a little bit, but I think when you begin to see yourself in, in your true self and you begin to learn about you and what you need and what your wants are, um, you start to, live more in your authentic self when you do that then reality becomes more more in real time because a lot of times if we're living in yesterday or living into into tomorrow and not present then we have a tendency to fall short of being aware of what's going on right now yeah. you know and so people that are living in the fantasy bonds, whether they're with the person or no longer with them, because we talked about, I know a couple of times where the mind is so powerful, you can feel that same bond just yes. in thought and it not being the case. Yeah. <laughs> it can be a past love or whatever, and we can go right back into yeah. that. And the mind like doesn't know the difference. It's like you're there, like it's happening. Yes. So yeah. we need to know, am I present? Am I present in the time right now? Am I where I need to be right now? Or am I still living in yesterday? Am I still pondering on an ex-love? Am I still wanting and desiring the old stuff? Am I thinking about what I can get tomorrow? Or am I right here right now? 
And once you start to get more present in your own heart, mind, and soul, and become more your authentic self, I think then we find ourselves to be more in a realistic bond with someone rather than so caught up in fantasy bond. Well, and it can be, and and here's the the biggest bonus of that is like, it can be just as good. Oh, as absolutely, fantasy, right. And, and yes. that we like it's the same what we can went back to before like you giving it to yourself whatever you're looking for in this illusion that's mm -hmm. okay but it's like what is is it working right like is this illusion right. that I've created is it actually giving me what I want or do I need to give me what I want or do I need to give me the opportunity for that to come into reality in right. my life yeah. right and that and that's that's the that's the part of manifesting so that's manifestation that you were just talking about right there placing yourself in that realm to where you can receive yeah and be open to receiving because a lot of times we can't we're closing <laughs> off we're closing off our well yeah being in effect, it is close because it's like in a way it's already filled that in yeah, it's already filled that. So why would it come into you? It come in 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 any because it, it's filled that in a way with the fantasy. So here's the difference between the vision and the fantasy, right? With right. the vision, we still get to work towards it and allow it to come into reality. With right. the fantasy, it's like we're not. It's not going to come into reality. It never will because no. we're trying to. We're avoiding experiencing reality. It's yes. not wanting to exactly. see it. And it's right. not accepted right and that's one of the one one of the wonderful things that i hope that everybody takes from this video here is that we're expressing the importance of understanding that fantasy is really capping you off with really un enjoying the now enjoying yeah. the reality enjoying the bonds that could be even deeper and more fulfilling than your fantasy can ever imagine and those are things that people don't get because they they can't get out of the fantasy long enough to experience it it's because of the fear uh, and the fear, fear. Avoid yeah. avoidance and fear is what's stopping that to, to actually come to fruition like you said you're, you're not going to get it as long as you're staying in that fantasy world right? yeah. yeah well i'm so glad we had a wonderful once again a wonderful conversation about fantasy bonds i think that anybody that watches this will learn that you're not alone, nor are you uh, strange because you've fallen victim to <laughs> fantasy versus reality. Because really, sometimes we can enjoy fantasy. We can. Um, I think some of the best creations is from fantasy. I mean, Walt Disney, look what he did, being in his fantasy world. Um, and he's since pa passed on, but the fantasy's still here. So, you know, it's, it's important that we understand the difference. Um, I love that Shelsey shared the the um, ability to compartmentalize the difference between um, fantasy and I think you talked about um, what was it fantasy and uh, and vision that's very yeah. important yes because vision is powerful um, and is essential for manifesting yeah so we don't want to get you confused that if you're in vision envisioning or you are trying to bring to life a vision that that is not what you should be doing you should be doing that right. <laughs> but if you're living in a fantasy world basically you're just living in a world of you know rainbows and daffodils hoping that life is going to look and right. represent that um you want to make sure that you're clear in your heart and mind that that's really just fun to play in even to create or to do poetry or art or, you know, create, po you know, plays or all kinds of stuff you can create just from that, ha having that, that joyful uh, time in fantasy. But when you're talking about bonding with someone, you want to be as authentic, or as, as true as possible that you can be. You also want to learn that if you're not in your authentic self, deception will show up lies distrusting actions will show up because that person cannot live up to your fantasy in in your mind so they're going to try to do everything in their power to keep that fantasy here and and they're going to fall short of being their authentic self and you're going to feel like you've been betrayed 
But the truth is they just couldn't live up to your fantasy. And that is what causes these fantasy bonds to get kind of toxic too. Yeah, that's, this is such an amazing topic. And I think the the biggest takeaway was like to, to come back to ourselves and to do that work within ourselves and to see why, like, why is it a fantasy instead of a vision? Like, why am I not going to put in the action towards yes. it? Yeah, yes. is that, maybe yes. that's the difference is like the acceptance of reality, right. stage and vision, and then the aligned action towards bringing that into reality instead of the avoidant fear that just doesn't allow for what you said for that authentic relating and yeah, yeah. that's true um so i'm so glad you you took your hour up for uh sharing this i i had a lot of fun with this today i think yeah. it really reigns through the power that we can really help others to see that you know any type of bond whatsoever can be um can be, you know, uh, sometimes a little unhealthy. So we need to be mindful that whenever yeah. we're bonding with another soul or souls, yeah. that we're clear that we're in a true, authentic being of self and um, sharing ourself in, our, in, in the best that we can, as authentic as we can. I think that's yeah. important. I think yeah. all of these subjects are awesome because it brings that awareness, like, that's the first step, right? Is to know and to yeah. be aware. So all of these subjects are awesome that we get to talk about because it's Absolutely. maybe that people didn't see or didn't know even that existed or weren't aware of right. how it was affecting them. So yes. we bring that awareness in and then the opportunity yeah. to then go, okay, how can I work this yes. within myself? And so we have something coming. Carla and I oh, are working yeah. together. I want to show that you something. Is all about that personal work and that personal clearing and developing and meeting stuff at the root and yes. um and being and the, and then you're able to show up in a different way when Look you do that I have. oh that's gorgeous so i'm going to create something for our i wanted to show you that i'm going to create something for our um next project that we're going to do i think that's going to be phenomenal for them <laughs> yeah it's, so it's, it's something that's really accessible to like a large yeah. group of people it's yeah. something that i'm accessible that people can do in their own time and that doesn't take up a lot of time but that will right. like make leaps and bounds of difference if you just right. don't know because it's easy to take all of this information in right and be like well now where do i start right like what what does yeah. the word mean what does acceptance mean what does action yeah. around that mean and so yeah. we're being able to develop this and I know, I cannot, you have no idea, I'm bursting, <laughs> wanting to say what it is, but we're going to hold on to that, we're going to, we're going to have the goal as, like I said, we're going to try to shoot for March to get everybody on board, but I am so excited, I think that it's imperative that people understand that what we're going to develop for this group and for what we're trying to create um, it's going to be a powerful thing, I think a lot of times people don't realize that in our life, there's so much meaning that we don't get exposure to. Mm -hmm. um, and what I, and, and just from my own personal um, understanding is that, you know, a lot of our source of truth, and, and I say that with, with the utmost respect, is the church <laughs> uh -huh. or our school system. <laughs> right. And now, so with those two institutes of thought, um, a lot of times we fall short on some other, um, learning and exposure to things that we need to have to have a little more awareness about what we're really supposed to be doing while we're here so because it's so limited in those scopes of thought we we see it we see it, we tend to feel like once we graduate we're good we're good we're and done. It's so well intentioned like you're good for within that box of, <laughs> right like, you are good for what yes. it was created for, which isn't, we don't live our whole <laughs> life around this, in this box. Like, no. It's so much broader than it's that. It's so much broader. And that's why I think I'm so excited about what we're developing is because we're going to pull out certain things that people are aware of, but they really don't know the in-depth part about it that's going to create this new awareness that when we're walking and talking and interacting with people, it's beyond just that moment. 
Yeah. Because everything that happens in our life leaves an imprint for us for something, everything. There's nothing that escapes that. So I think it's imperative that people start to get a little more aware than just saying, well, I went to school, I got my college degree, I got this, I got this, I got, you know, I got my ret retirement pin, I got this, I got that. And those are all great not to take from them. But life is so much larger than that. Well, it's like what you said, all this information, we get it and it, it like we can come in and we can retain it. Um, yes. But how we choose to use it depends on the lens that we see it through. So it's yes. really about kind of switching that lens out. Yes. So that it's like, oh, this is no matter what comes in, what I put out is valuable and beneficial and aligned instead yes. of like, um, just like following, following protocol is right. what we've been taught right. to do. Yes, yes. So like I said, if you guys have not yet joined our group, our group's name is Teachable Moments. It is for the seeker, for the one that wants to still remain a student and learn um, about yoga, about um, all kinds of stuff, just learning about life in general. Um, this is a group that is great for you to join. Um, we will be having workshops and retreats and all kinds of cool stuff coming up that I think you guys are going to really enjoy. Be sure to um, answer the questions to join the group because the group is designed for the ones that still are in, in pursuit of learning of self-love and learning of the importance of always remaining um, humble and understanding of learning outside of just the scope of thought that we just talked about here. Um, investing in yourself is very important. Um, and, and I think learning should continue. I don't think we should just, after we graduate or after we leave our jobs and no longer need the training for that, right. I think we need to still become students of life. What are we missing? Oh, Carla, like it's not even an option. Like we're gonna oh. be obligated to learn it, whether we learn it the hard way or the easy way, whether we learn it through yes. you know, breaking our faces on the same experiences over and over again, the same Groundhog opportunities day. Yes. in our life over and over again. Or right. being able to follow something that gives us a little bit of a shortcut. Like it's right. not even an option. It's a, it's a required, it's a required, like life is a required course. So, it is. It is regardless. Like you can't regardless. skip the step. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you so much, love. Um, we will be I in touch to get, get more into some of the other things we're going to go over with um, our, our plans. Um, but again, if anybody wants to um, have us talk about something that you are curious about, please, please, please let us know. Um, you can email us at teachable at coaches at teachable moments .com, um, to find out anything about our works and what we have going on. We have courses, we have all kinds of stuff that you can take advantage of. Um, and like I said, we're going to be very soon, like and I said, and hopefully we're going to shoot for March. For yeah. people to really learn some powerful things that we have um, coming through the downline, and we're really excited about. Like I said, I'm holding my, I'm holding it with everything I have. But we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna have a lot of fun, and we're also gonna have a lot of learning experiences. Um, if you don't know, uh, Shelby, be sure to um, friend request her. She has a lot of very powerful works that she does. Um, she's going to be providing us with some yoga stuff and we're going to just have a lot of fun. So be sure to share this video. Um, we are definitely wanting to make sure everybody learns about the different bonds we're talking about and just the different things that is essential for you to have a better, more fulfilling, wholesome life. So I appreciate you so much, Shelby. Thank you, Carla, and thank you for everyone that stuck with us this long and was, and we, you know, it wasn't by chance for sure you got something out of it that you needed and that you were supposed to get. And um, I'll love to stick around for another minute if anybody has comments at all, kind of go in and answer questions or anything like that. If, if Absolutely. That's what you want to do. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, Shells, for everything. I'm so excited. I will be also uploading this to our YouTube channel. If you guys have not yet subscribed to that, it's called Teachable Moments on YouTube. So make sure to, to get over there and subscribe to our channel. And like I said, we have a lot coming up. So just stay tuned.
and next month we're not sure what we're going to talk about yet next month but we will definitely get you guys abreast of what that next topic will be um and we will see you guys soon so thanks again for joining us guys it's carla nicole coach shelsey have a great afternoon have a good weekend bye carla bye babe